ladies and gentlemen, the NWA, the National Wrestling Alliance, and Worldwide Sports presents America's number one spectator sport, professional big time wrestling. to you, an old friend who's been here before, Terry Sullivan. Terry, it's great to have you back with us on Pro Wrestling. Thanks, Chuck. It's terrific to be back. And let me say one thing. I've been out in California, and I can say without any question now in my mind that this right here, this is the wrestling capital of the okay. world. We're going to be telling you why we're in this cage, too, as the television program progresses. But right now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into the ring and get this first match underway. Introducing, first of all, from L Germany, weighing in at 200 pounds, Eddie Dice. Eddie Dice. And his opponent, ladies and gentlemen, from Las Vegas, Nevada, weighing 246 pounds, Austin Idol. Austin Idol. I'll tell you, Terry, we saw Austin Idol for the very first time uh, about a month or so ago. He is some kind of a wrestler, I'll tell you that. Yes, he is. Certainly colorful. You can sure say that for the guy. Look at that beautiful, if those of you who are watching on black and white television, it's purple with pink on the inside. What a contrast in colors. Sure is, and I tell you, I've never seen a more arrogant man in my life either than this guy. He told me that that robe that is being taken off right now costs in excess of $12,000. Yeah, he's All got of, the money and he always spends it on that uh, those beautiful garments and everything. All of the sequins. Very unusual, but we have two contestants in that ring right now, both wearing purple. The long tights, Austin Idol. The short tights is Eddie Dice from Germany. Terry, this is the first time I've had the opportunity to see Eddie Dice. I've seen him a few times before, Chuck. He hasn't been a professional wrestler for quite a while, but he was an outstanding amateur. He knows all the moves, but I don't know how he'll fare against Austin Idol. Austin Idol, very conscious of that beautiful hair and whether it gets messed up or not. It's uh, a cross between the two of the great wrestlers uh, from the past, Gorgeous George. You remember how he always worried about his hair? Uh, so does Austin Idol worry about that. And there's one other one, and I'm sorry, I'm trying to think of his name, and I can, who was much of a prima donna in that ring and uh, always made sure that he looked just so-so. Beautiful headlock by Austin Idol, and he's applying pressure up against the ropes, hanging on to the hair, pulling the hair. Referee is Al Bulldog Thomas. This Austin Idol is quite skillful at uh, maneuvering behind the referee's back, Chuck. He did exactly that. Once again, he does it. He always makes sure the referee's got his back to what's happening there. I like the sound of our studio audience. They're certainly... Uh, up on what's happening in the ring right now. Al Thomas telling Austin Idol, I'm the boss, and I'll keep law and order. No pulling of the hair. That's got to hurt the scalp of Eddie Dice. Not only does Austin Idol have no regard for the fans at all, he also has no regard for the rules, as you can see very evidently on your screen right now. Behind the referee, pulling the hair, whoop. I believe the referee is, has seen this one. Now he's choking on the blind side of the referee. Oh, he's got all the moves. He's trying to outmaneuver Al Thomas, and so far he's doing a pretty good job of it. Hair pull takedown for Austin Idol. And the crowd is saying, no way. Well, I'll tell you, this crowd is sure very much anti-Austin Idol. They don't like this guy. He doesn't like them, and they know it, and they sure have no respect at all for Austin Idol, one of the most arrogant men ever to step into the professional wrestling ring. Now, Austin Idol is explaining to the referee how the takedown occurred, showing those mighty muscles. He's very proud of that. Austin Idol works out in the weight room every other day, works out with isometrics every day. That's how he was able to build that beautiful, massive body of his. Well, I'll say he calls it beautiful. Oh, chop with the fingers right into the throat of Eddie Dice. He's on the canvas and hurt. Eddie Dice isn't used to this kind of action. 
He isn't uh, doing too well against a guy who breaks the rules to the extent of Austin Idol. He's used to the more scientific approach in wrestling. Oh, that boot caught him right underneath the chin. Quite an unusual boots also that Eddie, uh, 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 rather uh, Austin Idol wears. It's flesh colored. Say what you will about Austin Idol. He is a very effective wrestler, very, very skillful. But he won't hesitate as he's doing right now to get that little extra advantage in there. Pushing that uh, leg against that rope, applying the pressure, hanging onto the neck. Referee checking to make sure it's not a chokehold. It's not, I believe, first of all, that the arm, uh, forearm of Austin Idol is too huge to get underneath the neck Could of be. Eddie Dice anyway. Well, he certainly is skillful at outmaneuvering the referee. He puts a punch to the forehead of Eddie Dice. Eddie Dice having a hard time getting up, getting a little help from Austin Idol. And he throws him up, throws him down. Big time wrestling, ladies and gentlemen, coming your way here each and every week. Nice to have you with us along our network. We're going to get a count, I believe. One, no, he stops. Oh, that's brutality, Terry. I think he could have pinned him right there, Chuck. He's been overwhelming Eddie Dice right from the opening bell. Arm drag into the ropes. Oh. Oh, he comes across with that forearm right underneath the chin. It puts Eddie Dice down. Oh, and there is his maneuver. It's a submission hold. The submission hold by Austin Idol, and it's going to be over, Terry. It's all over. Digging that knuckle right into that temple. They're just driving it in. The referee says it's all over. Submission hold. Eddie Dice is in pain. Austin Idol. Another victory to his belt. We've yet to see him lose, and we've seen him wrestle three different occasions. Now showing those massive biceps. Terry, that was a battle that Eddie Dice never got into. Certainly didn't. It's very unfortunate because, as I said, he is a skillful wrestler, but he's not skillful at the kind of tactics used by Austin Idol. That's for sure. I'd like to get a word if, if I can. I don't know how much time we have, but I would like to uh, have a word. Come here with uh, Austin Idol. Austin Idol, that's quite a submission. I'm sorry, I can't go any farther because of the court. But that's quite a submission hold. Eddie Dice is going to be a bit. It's called a wreck. And there's not a man in the world can withstand the pain, that can withstand the pressure, that can withstand the punishment. Ladies and gentlemen, Austin Idol, we'll be right call back. Call your girlfriends. Tell them Austin Idol's on TV now. Call your girlfriends. Wrestling Chuck Allen along with uh, with uh, Terry, and uh, this event will be introducing from Jacksonville, Florida, weighing 252 pounds, Danny Fargo. His opponent, ladies and gentlemen, from New York City, weighing 251 pounds, Mark Lewin. But well, Chuck, while you're doing, listen, what, what? I'm going to get this microphone and go over to Terry Funk. Terry, oh, ter just... Terry Funk is uh, complaining. You said that the people love Detroit, and the only people that really like Detroit are people that are colorblind. I understand where you're coming from. You want to talk about my brother and leave him stranded? What I want to do is I want to get this fat puke out of the ring, and I want to wrestle you now. No, 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 no. You're wrestling the next match. Come on, now. You're, you're scheduled to the next match. Get in the damn ring. Wait a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, we've got There's been a lot of bad, bad blood between these two guys. The referee calls for the belt. We're going to see it.
head to the referee hole, turns him around, looked out the fist. Oh, he let it up. Oops. Terry Funk did a move I didn't anticipate. He didn't hit him, he let him off the ropes, Terry. This is unreal. I've never seen anything like this before. Terry Funk is scheduled to wrestle our next match, and here he comes in. Lewin and him have got something going on between them, I'll tell you that. Right into a half Nelson on the canvas. Terry Funk is hurt. That arm is being twisted. Also, the wrist is being twisted by Mark Lewin. Al Thomas, the referee, says it's a legal hold. Terry Funk in pain in the canvas. The crowd is going crazy. They love it. Terry Funk has been coming out talking belligerently to the crowd all afternoon before these television cameras went on, and they love every minute of it. And we can tell you this, those remarks that Terry Funk says, claims that Mark Lewin made, believe me, Mark Lewin never made remarks like that. Those are lies, nothing but lies from Terry Funk. Mark Lewin having the upper hand right now on Terry Funk, twisting that arm, working it over, kicking. And a chop across the throat. Mark Lewin hangs on to that arm. He twists the arm again, down on one knee. Headbutt by Funk. Well, if it's action Terry Funk wants, he'll get action times 10. It'll be a war in there with Mark Lewin. He's ready. Look at him, he's ready. Terry Funk give a headbutt, knocked him out just about. I'm certainly sure that he saw stars, went to the canvas for a while, up again, the arm and the wrist, fully extended, pain. Now across the eyes of Mark Blue and Terry Funk. Bitterness between these two opponents. It, Terry Sullivan. And you're getting a look right now, fans, of the two top contenders for the United States Heavyweight Championship, not to mention the world title. Oh, beautiful boot right to the underneath the armpits of Terry Funk, working on that arm. Oh, he's in pain, puts the knee to the back. Look at the determination of the face of Mark Lewin. He wants to get this thing over with once and for all. Uh-oh, they're coming out, coming out of the ring. Now they go back inside. Mark Lewin, certainly the aggressor in this event so far. Twists the wrist right now of Terry Funk. Whether Terry Funk wants to fight in or out of the ring or out in the street, I'm sure it makes no difference to Mark Lewin. He'll follow him anywhere for a fight. Isn't this amazing to see these two wrestlers going at it? Absolutely unbelievable, Terry. Never thought we'd see this. But Terry Funk has just come on and there's, there's a change has come over him. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we can assure you that this particular event was not contracted for. Terry Funk is in that ring against Mark Lewin with no contract sign. Anything could happen in there. And really, with the National Wrestling Alliance, Terry, they are not protected against injury at this moment. That's right. I'm surprised the referee let it go, but uh, he did. And what the heck, we're not going to argue with him because what the action we're seeing. No contracts have been signed, no money put up, no insurance, no nothing. These two are in violation of the National Wrestling Alliance in that when two contestants get into that ring, they must have a contract. They do not have a contract. This is bitterness, ladies and gentlemen, on professional big-time wrestling. You said it earlier, Chuck, main event action on television today. Because anywhere across the world, Mark Lewin and oh, Terry what Funk... A punch. Excuse me, Terry, but that was a punch right to the jaw by Mark Lewin. Anywhere you want to go across the world, these two would be in a main event. Anywhere. Uh-oh. Rolls him out on the floor. Whoa. Boy, we're in the middle of the cage, Terry, and with these two, this cage might be coming down anytime. Puts the foot on the head of Mark Lewin. Terry Funk standing out on the apron. And the fans are coming alive, chanting for Mark Lewin. Go, Mark, go. Oh, they're fighting outside the ring. The referee's called and stop. Ring the bell. It's all over. It's all over. Now the chair is broken in the studio, ladies and gentlemen. Terry Funk and Mark Lewin fighting outside. The vote is all over. They've been counted outside of the ring. There will be no decision in this particular event, Terry. This, this is dangerous now, Chuck. This is dangerous. Look at him in that piece of broken chair. Mark Lewin puts the chair to the forehead of Terry Funk here on the question of big time wrestling. 
No decision in this event. The referee counted 10. They were outside of the ring. The bell was sounded. Oh. It's all over. Oh, he puts that board right into the forehead. And we're giving the people what they want to see right now. This is what the people want. Mark Lewin and Terry Funk. Terry Funk is hurt. He's been hurt with that stick right into the middle of the forehead. Look out. Oh, into the sleeper hole by Mark Lewin. Sleeper hole and Terry Funk, ladies and gentlemen. This could be it for Terry Funk. He's wilting. He's wilting. Look at him down on his, on his knees now. He's going under with the sleeper hole. But wait a minute. Here comes Walter Johnson. Walter Johnson comes into the ring, ladies and gentlemen. And he's using the flag oh. check on the head of Mark Lewin. Oh, what a brutal punch by Walter Johnson with that flag check. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, we have completely lost the semblance of water on professional big time wrestling. Oh, Terry Funk is bleeding. He's picking up another chair. The fan won't let him have it. Mark Lewin is out on the floor in the canvas. And now Terry breaks another chair. Walter Johnson is in the ring. He took the blackjack and put on the head of Mark Lewin. Mark Lewin is out cold. This is dangerous. Walter Johnson and Terry Funk both in the ring against Mark Lewin. He's now cold. Look at this. Can you believe that Terry Funk would stoop so low as to do this to a man who is unconscious or very, very near to unconscious? Look at him. I can't believe that Terry oh, Funk would do this. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, the action that has occurred here on professional big time wrestling. Of my 12 years of commentating pro wrestling, I've never seen anything oh. like this before. Walter Johnson. Walter Johnson is standing there just like a vulture. Look at him. The Particularly with the caliber, Terry, of these three individuals, Walter Johnson, Mark Lewin, and Terry Funk. Look what's happening here. This is just totally uncalled for. It's brutality. Mark Lewin has come around a little bit. At least his eyes are open, but I'm sure he doesn't know where he is now. And there's Walter Johnson with that object again. I don't know what it is. Ladies right. and gentlemen, Mark Lewin is at the mercy right now of Terry Funk and Walter Johnson, the referee in the ring. Looks like no the referee other wrestler is... has come out to give any assistance. But ladies and gentlemen, we've got a break for this message. Don't you dare go away. you do the accolades and the introduction. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, introducing from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing 355 pounds, Big Red. And his opponent from Jacksonville, Florida, weighing 252 pounds, Danny Fargo. Okay, Big Red and Danny Fargo from Jacksonville, Florida. Danny was scheduled to wrestle Mark Lewin. Apparently, they worked all of that out. Now he's back with Big Red and has his chance for professional big time wrestling here on television. Danny Fargo from Jacksonville, my old hometown, Terry, beautiful city. Right. Terry Funk was originally scheduled to wrestle Big Red in the mood of Terry Funk today. Maybe it's maybe it's lucky for Big Red that Terry Funk didn't get in with him. That's right. Oh, boy. Well, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you at home, we certainly apologize for the confusing at the beginning of this particular segment, but uh, Mark Lewin was just taken out of the ring just as we came back from our commercial break. Absolute pandemonium in the studio. Pandemonium in the studio. Terry, I've never seen anything like this on professional wrestling. I, you know, I'm almost glad we were here inside of this cage, oh. Chuck. And you know, we still haven't explained to the people what we're doing inside of this cage. The cage is here, it's brand new, it's newly constructed, and if you've ever seen a cage match before, 
Let me tell you, this is a brand new cage, and uh, when a wrestler gets his head or any part of his body banged into this cage, boy, he is going to feel it like times three of the other cages. This is a very well-constructed heavy steel cage, and I tell you, I sure wouldn't want to be involved in any kind of a cage match in this. And uh, you fans right here are going to be seeing this cage. You're going to be seeing action inside of this cage. This is what you can expect to see. Big Red in that ring right now against Danny Fargo. I don't know if I feel protected in here or not, Terry. They got a door that's wide open. Yeah. <laughs> and I was wondering if anybody was coming in at any time, whether Mark Lewin and uh, Terry Funk wanted to go in the cage or not. Absolutely unbelievable. Big Red from Atlanta, Georgia. Danny Fargo from Jacksonville. A couple Southern boys in there right now. Well, after the way Mark Lewin and Terry Funk went at it, maybe they belong in a cage. Big Red picks Danny Fargo up. Has that arm stretch on him. Back up against the uh, turnbuckles. Fargo goes to the punch for the head. Across the face. Oh, and Big Red puts on the big dance. Turns him around and whoops him. Rolls his head into the whoops. The whole body went into the turnbuckle. Big Red didn't get the head down. Big Red's got his little dance there. I'll tell you, he's a real lovable guy. Got a big sense of humor. As big as he is, Chuck real lovable guy in that ring. The fans just take to him like crazy. Well, I can certainly see why. Now he's riding his man. Oh, he put the knees right into the kidneys. That hurts. 355 pounds of him. Wow. He's a big man. Al Thomas down on, his, on the canvas asking Danny Fargo if he'd like to give it up. What the heck can Danny Fargo do to get out of this? I'll tell you, we certainly have an enthusiastic studio crowd here with us today, and they have seen some action on professional television that no one has ever seen before. What a never show seen anything been. like that. Yes, sir. Looks like the ring could have been broken a little bit, Terry. It looks like it's dipping down in the middle. Yeah, you know that? right. With the likes of, Dor of a Terry Funk and Mark Lewin going at it, boy, that can happen. They're lucky that whole ring didn't collapse the way they were going at it. Certainly can. All along our network, ladies and gentlemen, you better call a friend and tell him wrestling's on the air. You never actually know what's going to happen. I will tell you what's coming up, however. We're going to have an interview with uh, Walter Johnson and Terry Funk, uh -oh. if he's able to come back out. And we have picked a couple of uh, spectators from our studio audience. They have the opportunity to ask Walter Johnson and Terry Funk any question they desire. Terry, I'd like to have you come out with me on this interview. We have about five minutes, and uh, we'll be able to wrap with Walter Johnson and Terry Funk. Should be interesting. Walter Johnson, great football star from the Cleveland Browns, the Cincinnati Bengals. Of course, uh, he's having his difficulties right now, which I'm sure we'll, you'll get into. That's with right. We're going to be talking about his contract dispute right now with the Cincinnati Bengals. And that's what we're going to want to talk to Walter Johnson about. Certainly has added a lot to wrestling, however, to have Walter Johnson wrestling for us when he's not playing football. Well, Big Ed, or Big Red, rather, has certainly given it to Danny Fargo in this particular event, two Southern boys. Big Red, very much the aggressor. Well, what do you do with 355 pounds anyway, Terry? Well, I, sh I don't know. This is one way to get to him, though, and it's, it's sure not orthodox, but that's, uh, that's the way Danny Fargo is going to handle it. But it didn't work for him, as you can see. And there's the headbutt from Big Red. The headbutt, and he's on the move, off the ropes, up, and oh, down he goes. The big splash. That's got to be it. Oh, my goodness. It's over already, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, I think, Terry, we ought to come out of the cage. to be on our interview. We didn't know anything like this was going to occur. Uh, we hope that you're uh, able to do this. If not, Terry, uh, out of courtesy to you, sir, you can be excused. Able to do it. I don't want to be excused. Right, I'll sir. be excused after I finish telling you something. Okay. Walter Johnson here did the right thing. He did exactly what Mark Lewin should have done whenever my brother was in the ring with Don Kent. But no, he stood back here and stood to the side whenever somebody was being taken advantage of illegally. Just like I was being taken advantage of by Mark Lewin illegally. And who came to my aid is Walter Johnson. 
Now you want to question me as a world champion, let me say something. I personally challenge any one of the sports fans, any one of the professional athletes, any one of the bums, any one of the jerks to a match. I will put up $5,000 if Mark Lewin or anybody else can come in the ring and pin me for a three count. Mark Lewin won't even put up his United States championship. Now, I understand that, Terry. And I know that you're a little upset just here? a moment. We've asked some I don't people, like people that close to me. Excuse me. We've asked some people from the audience to ask any question they want to ask of you. First of all, I'd like to have your name, sir. Scott Head. Scott Head, yes, ask sir. Terry Funk any question. If you're such a good, true champion, how come you lost your belt to Harley Race? I'll tell you what I'll do with you, punk. I'll take you and I'll back in you so fast. Wait a minute. Come here. Come here. Come here now. If you want to wrestle me down at the Cobo, just come on down there and I'll put up the $5,000 if you can beat me or any other jerk. Fatso, you're out of shape. You look like you might be one of Lewin's brothers or his relative. Get out of here, you jerk. Get rid of me. Get okay, ladies and gentlemen, jerk. that's a question for Mr. Head. Walter Johnson, great to have you on professional wrestling. We have a spectator from the audience to ask you a question as well. And your name, sir? Rodney Lord. Pardon me? Rodney Lord. Rodney, nice yeah. to meet you. Ask Walter Johnson, football star, professional wrestling star, any question you want. Why did you give up your uh, football pro career for wrestling? Well, last year I had a contract problem with the Bengals, so I'm playing out my option this year. And I think, you know, football, uh, not be, uh, wrestling, I think, is a little tougher than football. And I want to show everybody you know, how good I am. I have already showed everybody in football that I was a great defensive tackle. Now I'm going to show everybody that I'm a great, great wrestler. Well, Walter Johnson, I'll tell you. Uh, I, you uh, Walter, Walter, I guess you know that whenever you step in a ring, it's like I told you before, as you are stepping into a ring with a complete bigot, a complete jerk, a fellow that doesn't go ahead and care anything about furthering his profession are furthering the likes of professional wrestling. All he cares about is winning and losing. And watch a man because he might bring anything into that ring. He'll try anything because he wants to win at any cost. And he doesn't concern himself with rules whatsoever, as you could tell whenever Mark Lewin was in the ring with me. My brother's going to hear about this, too. That's right. Walter Johnson, I would like to have the opportunity to ask you if you, if you are permitted, if your attorneys are allowing you to, to state this particular thing, why are you in a contract dispute right now with the Cincinnati Bengals? The season's just starting, and I'm sure they need you down there. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think I'm waiting. I'm probably here for many minutes, but like right now, I'm devoting all my time to wrestling. You know, my whole time is going to be devoted to wrestling. In the past, I played football, and I wrestled during the offseason, but now I'm going to wrestle year-round. Are you saying then that you're retiring from football? No, but I'm staying out this whole year. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the great Walter Johnson, formerly of the Cleveland Browns, now the Cincinnati thank Bengals. Again, thank you very much, Terry Funk. I want to thank you once again. We're and out I of want, time, ladies I and gentlemen. Back after the U.S. Championship. Let's introduce from Cincinnati, Ohio, and the Cincinnati Bengals, weighing 275 pounds, Walter Johnson. His opponent from Boston, Massachusetts, weighing 248 pounds, Mike Wayne. Mike Wayne. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, during our interview segment, as you probably noticed, Terry Funk was preoccupied with some other activities, and uh, we didn't really get a chance to ask Walter Johnson some of the questions we wanted answered concerning his, uh, concerning his uh, contract dispute, but at a later date, maybe we'll be able to do that. Walter Johnson, the great football player that he is, wrestling for an entire year, he'll be wrestling. And a great wrestler he is. He is strong, Chuck. You know, they, they, they don't have any weaklings out on that football field. No, they certainly don't. Oh, what a brutal forearm smash to the chest of Mike Wayne. Mike Wayne from Boston, Massachusetts. 248 pounds. In there with the likes of big number 71, Walter Johnson. 
And Waldo Johnson all of 275 pounds. He puts that forearm smash that I feel clear oh. over here. And Terry, it's a, it's a cement floor, but it still jiggles when he puts that forearm smash to the chest of Big Mike Wayne. Mike is no little guy either. He's 248 pounds. That's right. That Waldo Johnson looks just plain vicious. Look at him up there. Just a vicious, vicious man. He's been hanging around Terry Funk too long, I have a feeling. I think I'll agree with that. Whoa! Oh my bit. goodness! That was a blunt! He puts his body across the body of Mike Wayne! One, two! It's all over! It's all over! Now, ladies and gentlemen, Walter Johnson gets this victory. Terry Sullivan, I'll tell you that again, the fans are going to see a championship event, championship caliber, because we're going to be having the Sheik and Dory Funk against Bulldog Kent and Stan the Man Stasiak. It's going to be a curfew event, and that's going to come up right after Pro-Am Wrestling. So ladies and gentlemen, don't go away. Our friend Terry Sullivan will be commentating that segment. Back after this. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, M Pro Wrestling that Terry Sullivan was able to commentate for us. And Terry, why don't you introduce this particular segment for us? Well, Chuck, we've got two young men, two fantastic young amateur wrestlers called uh, Tim Dishong from the University of Toledo, Ohio, against Jeff Thomas from Michigan State University. It uh, all took place several weeks ago up in East Lansing in Michigan State University. We had the pleasure to take our worldwide sports cameras up there, had a terrific, terrific time, and saw the, the future pros, I guess you would say, since most of the pros do definitely get their start in the so here we go to Ampro Wrestling. And four, Justin I'm Terry Sullivan here at Michigan State University in East Lansing, Michigan tonight. The scene of the Michigan State University invitation. We've got eight teams in competition tonight. You'll be seeing many of them on this program today. And this particular match in the striped uniform from uh, the University of Toledo, it's Tim Dishon. In the green, it's Jeff Thomas from Michigan State University. Out of bounds. And joining us is the assistant coach at the University of Toledo, Ohio, himself an outstanding college wrestler at Grand Valley State College, Mr. John Harris. John, nice to have you with us today. Thank you very much. And okay, this is one of your, uh, your men in the stripe, right? That's right. Uh, this is a sophomore from the University of Toledo, and uh, his name's Tim Dishong. He didn't start all last year, although he did see some action. He's um, coming on this year. He should be coming on very well by the end of the year. But right now, we're just hoping that we'll see a chance, get a chance to see him uh, use some of his stuff and really come on. We he's, should add that this is the 126-pound weight class also. That's right. He's, he's wrestling a man from Michigan State who, at this point, I really don't know that much about. Jeff is a sophomore from uh, Huntington, New York, graduate of Huntington High School. He compiled a 6-5 and five record in 76 and 77. But check out his high school record, 125, 4 and 1. Well, that's, Two that's individual similar. state championships while he was in high school. So your your man Tim Tim Dishaw from Toledo would apparently have his hands full. Yes, it does look like that. The scores now became two to one in favor of the right. Thomas. He scored a nice takedown off a single leg takedown. Uh, almost worked for back points, but didn't quite score it. Tim has now escaped and is working for the for more points. The reason the match was just stopped was that they went off the mat. If two supporting points of one wrestler leave the mat, such as the feet, then it is considered off the mat, okay? Or excuse me, if, if two supporting points of one wrestler are on the mat, then it's considered on the mat. However, if one of each are off the mat, then it is considered off the mat. So if he's got okay. a hand and a foot, uh, if he's got a hand and a foot off, he's out. That's, okay. that's right, that's right. What uh, class is Tim in in Toledo, University of Toledo? Uh, he is a sophomore. A sophomore, yeah. Huh. Okay, now the scores become four to one on a nice double leg takedown right down the front. Uh, I believe they will score one point here for Dishong and uh, go even. Okay, now when, when they go off the mat like that and one man turns and stays on the mat, so his two supporting points are on, then at that point he still does score. Now as you see, the man from Michigan State, Thomas, has now reached in on another single and has hit a Real nice one. They will not call points until he has control, however, which he never received before the period ran out. That was signified by the towel coming in, 
and for that reason, no points were scored in the final flurry. That wasn't somebody's coach throwing in a towel, then. That was a signification <laughs> of the end of the first period here. No, unlike boxing, that's one difference between wrestling and boxing, among other differences. First time I saw, I, saw, I saw that happen, I thought, my goodness, and no, they say it's just the end of the period. <laughs> nope, just the end of the period. In competition where it's very important to understand what is what the time uh, estimation is, that sort of thing, like national finals or something, a person will actually come out and tap the official exactly when the match is over. That way, in case he doesn't see the towel coming or something, nobody is, uh, is uh, dipped out of some points in some way or another. All right, okay, they go at it again. It's Jeff Thomas in the green for Michigan State University and Tim Deshaun, the University of Toledo. What a Thomas has just scored one point by an escape. As you saw, they, they had the flip of the coin between periods, and one of the men won the toss and got to choose if he wanted to be on the bottom or the top. This will change in the third period, and they will go in just the opposite positions of what they were in in the second period. All right, they're struggling away. Neither one able to gain any uh, kind of an advantage thus far. We're into the second period in this 126-pound weight class. Jeff Thomas, Michigan State University in East Lansing, Michigan, against Tim Deshaun from the University of Toledo. John, what about your own? You, you know, we talked about Jeff Thomas from Michigan State in high school. He was 125, 4 and 1. Uh, but uh, what about your record? You've got uh, sort, of, sort of a comparable record from your years at Grand Valley State College. How about that? Uh, yes, I've compiled a... Don't be modest now. Tell us the truth. 25, 18, and 5 record there. And... Uh, I graduated last year. Uh, I'd say that probably what capped off my career there was being able to qualify for an all-star team through our uh, national tournament that uh, took me to the Orient and ah. Japan and Korea, which was an experience what I'll never forget. What a thrill that must have been, yeah. It was my first chance at wrestling international competition, and I was very happy about the chance to do it. And I think one thing that, that uh, tipped it off the most was I had another teammate from Grand Valley that also went. and. Uh, my head coach from Grand Valley also was named head coach of the team to go to go there, and so I had a lot of company and good way for the three of us to end our final years together there at Grand Valley. Right. Okay. Back to the match. Once again in the 126-pound uh, weight class. Explain what the referee did there, John Lee. Okay. I believe there he called a stalemate. Uh, whenever there is absolutely no action occurring, because the men are tangled in a position where it's difficult for either of them to move without. Uh, putting themselves in jeopardy, they will call a stalemate and start them back in, in a neutral position where they were before. Okay, now, the Michigan State man was in control when they uh, went to the stalemate position, so they will again uh, start the match with him in control. The score has moved to 7-2 to two now on a couple of uh, different takedowns by the man from State, and this ended the second period. Oh, I'm sorry about that. The man that is ahead is the man from state, Michigan State, okay. Thomas. This is Am Pro Wrestling. I'm Terry Sullivan, and uh, some of these guys you're watching on the program now might be the professionals of tomorrow. Of course, we're in a uh, rather light weight class. We'll be seeing some heavyweights a little bit later on here tonight. This is the Michigan State University Invitational. And uh, we hope you're enjoying this entire television program today as we bring you the similarities of which there are many and the differences, the distinctions of which there are, of course, many between the amateurs and the professionals. Of course, 99% of those professionals started off right where these kids right here are now. They started off in high school, many of them going on to college. And they're out of bounds. All the way over to the next one. That sometimes causes a difficulty in competition in tournaments imagine. where there's uh, three mats going because, uh, well, first of all, the problem with the whistles, you maybe hear the whistle on the mat next to you. John, let me explain before you go any farther for the people uh, who are just watching this one match going on. We are at an invitational tournament. There are three mats happening simultaneously. We're bringing you uh, an objective opinion of the best of the three matches right now. It has nothing to do with the fact that you're from Toledo and the guy down there is from Toledo, John. <laughs> well, we like to think we're building a good program there. The head coach, Harvey Bowles, has had a lot of international experience. He's an international official, and uh, he does coach a lot from an international standpoint. He works with a lot of moves that he feels his men will be able to take on, to, on with them after college into international competition. And we've been lucky enough to also have on the staff uh, 
Virgil Smith, who has a brother who is outstanding on our team at 42. Virgil himself wrestled for University of Toledo and did an outstanding job. And he is now coaching, and, and uh, so that makes the three of us there to try to, to build a, an excellent program. We've heard great things about you in Toledo itself, a town of which I am somewhat familiar. Just live there, that's all. Back to what's happening. If you're just joining us in the 126-pound weight division, it's Tim Dishaw the University of Toledo. He's in the, uh, uh, the striped outfit okay, against Jeff Thomas from Michigan State. Tim has ju had just escaped, but just to be taken down again. He scored the one for escaping and was taken down again, so he lost two points, and now the score is 9-3 to three in favor of Thomas. It must be drawing late in the period. Actually, the score would be 10 to 3 in favor of Thomas because for each minute you ride an opponent longer than, than he rides you, you score an extra point. Okay, now this is only good for one point, however. So if you ride him a minute longer than he rides you, you get an extra point, which sometimes plays an awful big... Uh, it's the referee's job to keep track of the, that time as the uh, thing progresses, right? Well, they have a riding time clock that's located on the side of the mat, and it goes towards the red side if it's scoring for one man and towards the green side if it's scoring for the other. That's the way they tell, and not by just the referee's right. discretion. We've got an ending. The winner from Michigan State University is Jeff Thomas. The score, final score, Michigan State University, Jeff Thomas. Nine, Tim Deshaun from the University of Toledo, three. Back with more in a moment. You know, you know, Terry, I, I certainly enjoy M Pro Wrestling. That's absolutely super. Aren't they great, though? Those young guys really can move around. We thank them from appear, for appearing today and wish them the best of luck in the future. But, Chuck, we have got ugh, a oh. match of matches coming up. A great one. The Sheik and Dory Funk against Bulldog Kent and Stan the Man Stasiak. Wow. Another championship event for you right here on Big Time Wrestling. Don't go away. Back after this. gentlemen championship action on professional big time wrestling absolutely what a fantastic hour terry sullivan we have the sheik and dory funk against bulldog kent and stand the man stasiak and you can hear all of the noise in the background as they're making their entrance let's make the introductions terry go ahead okay ladies and gentlemen introducing first from amarillo texas weighing 260 pounds ladies and gentlemen dory funk jr and his tag team partner from Syria, weighing 242 pounds, the Sheik, accompanied by his manager, the Palestinian brain, Eddie Creechman. And their opponents first from Buzzard Creek, weighing 300 pounds, Stan, the man, Stasiak. And from Indianapolis, Indiana, 243 pounds, Bulldog, Don Kent, accompanied in the ring by their manager, pretty boy Floyd Creechman. That's absolutely correct, Terry Sullivan. What action here on professional wrestling today. The heart punch, the man with the heart punch. Stan, the man, Stasiak, I know what that feels like. Oh, my goodness, that heart punch is brutal. He's in there with Bulldog Don Kent as his partner. Dory Funk and the Sheik. Terry Sullivan, did you think of all of your pro wrestling career as commentating that you would ever see Dory Funk and the Sheik as a team? Oh, not in my wildest dreams did I ever expect that, but I'll tell you what, we're getting it for free right here on television. I'd pay 25 bucks for a ringside seat to see this match, no kidding. Wow. <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. The referee, Al Thomas, is trying to get the managers out of the ring. There you have a father and son team. You have Eddie the Brain Creechman, pretty boy Floyd Creechman, and now they're arguing with each other. The Sheik must give his prayers. He's taking off his uh, paraphernalia, his scarf. This is a duration match at the end and the conclusion of our television time. It's over. Whether we have a decision or not, it's over. The bell sounds. Creechman standing there at the corner. Eddie Creechman at the other corner. A headlock applied by Stan the Man Stasiak on Dory Funk. Oh, a brutal punch to the forehead. Terry and Dory comes back with one himself. And there comes Kent into the ring. Compliments of Dory Funk Jr. Look at Funk going to work on him. Wow! That's getting into the ring the hard way. 
I see both the Sheik and Stan Stasiak periodically looking over here at this cage. They know, and you fans know why they're watching this cage. They're going to be inside of this cage, the Sheik and Stan Stasiak. And is that going to be something to see? Well, inside this gentlemen, brand felt, new cage. Uh, I felt a little comfort inside this cage, but I don't know. Anytime you have the Sheik, Stan the Man, Stasiak, Terry Funk, there's a big door out here, Terry. Do you feel comfortable? Uh, maybe if you put a couple of locks on that thing, I might. Although they could crawl over the top if they wanted to. Yes, they could. With their uh, abilities, they could do most anything. Look out, a big knee right into the midsection of Dory Funk by Bulldog Kent. He picks him up in a body slam. And that's why the ring has been sagging in the middle all afternoon. The Sheik is in there now. The crowd is going wild. They love this man in the ring, Terry. I never thought I'd see anything like this in wrestling. Oh, when I heard about this, I went crazy. I just couldn't believe it. But what a great sign it is. The news got all the way out to California. Yeah, darn right it did. And they tried to sign it for Los Angeles. And they tried to sign it for San Francisco. But they got it here. The match with Stasiak and the Sheik in the cage. Chuck, I understand the Sheik has his own form of the heart punch, am I correct? Well, if he does, Terry, I have not seen that, but it could have happened in the last month or so as I've been away. If he does, that's got to be giving Stan Stasiak a few nightmares, because he sure knows what that heart punch can do to other people. Oh, absolutely. I think pro wrestling, if you know you've got an opponent coming up and he has something, I think he has something. And knowing the Sheik as well as you and I both know him, I'm sure he's going to have something. Of course, there's the ever-present fear of the fire whenever the Sheik steps into the ring. Oh, and once again, that big elbow smash to the underneath the chin of Bulldog Kip, and the Sheik pounds the head down of Stan the Man Stasiak has finally made contact with him. He continues to pound the head of Stasiak. Oh, my God, time is right now. Here they oh, come. The They're man. coming towards the cage. Look out. Watch out. We're getting out of here. The Sheik and Stasiak coming after that cage. Stasiak is on the inside. The Sheik on the outside trying to get in. Hurry, let me out of here. Stasiak wants out. The Sheik wants in. We're in a horrible position here. I don't know how to get out because they blocked the door. We can't get out. The door's jammed shut, I think. What's the plan? He's coming over the top. Uh oh, here comes the chair. Watch out, let's get out of here. The Sheik is aiming that chair at Stan Stasiak. Oh, Bulldog Kid, look at the action on the floor. And watch out, Stasiak is getting near us. Maybe he thinks the Sheik won't throw it if he's behind us. Come on, don't get behind us. The Stasiak can be put in that same caliber as, as being a maniac. Well, there comes the chair. The Sheik is all the way to the top of the cage. We do not have a monitor. I don't know what you fans at home are seeing. But don't take your eyes off the television screen. This is the brand new reinforced cage you're going to see these two inside of. Ladies and gentlemen, there's action going on the floor. That's what you can see. Dory Buck and Bulldog Kit are fighting. The Sheik is standing on the top railing. Stan the Man Stasiak is inside the ring. Our time is expiring, Terry. And hey, this is a duration match. Our time is expiring. And we're going to get the Sheik and Stan the Man Stasiak.